Elsewhere in the news now, British Prime Minister David Cameron is in hot water over his ties to Rupert Murdoch's media empire. He faces scrutiny as a former top lieutenant of News International appears at the Leveson inquiry. I, I received some indirect messages from um, number 10, number 11, home office, foreign office. So you're talking about um, the Secretaries of State, Prime Minister, Chancellor of the Exchequer, obviously, aren't you? And also people who, who worked in um, those offices as well. Mm -hmm. And la Labour politicians, how about them? Um, like I say, there were very few Labour politicians mm. that sent commiserations. OK, Mr Blair, did he send you one? Uh, yes. But probably not Mr Brown, but I... No. He's probably getting the bunting out. I mean, it, it has been reported in relation to Mr Cameron, but um, who knows whether it's true, that you received a, a message of support along the lines, keep your head up. Is that true or not? From? From Mr Cameron, indirectly. Um, You've seen I'll... that in the Times. Yes, I did see it in the Times. Along those lines, it was more, I, I don't think that they were the exact words, but along those lines. Rebecca Brooks is being grilled about her ties with Cameron. She resigned as chief executive of Murdoch's British newspaper arm, News International, in the wake of the phone hacking scandal. Cameron is under fire over a series of disclosures that he ordered close ties between the government and Murdoch's most powerful executives. Joining me now on the line from London, Chris Bambry, political analyst. Mr Bambry, thanks so much for being with us. First of all, how serious do you see this as becoming for the British Prime Minister? I, I think the Cameron, David Cameron and the Cameron government is getting increasingly in, uh, surrounded by allegations of Swedes. Uh, the fact that this woman, Rebecca Brooke, had to uh, step down as News of the World editor because of hacking of private phone calls, including that of a murdered teenager, uh, and then she has been subsequently arrested. Now, the questioning today at the inquiry wasn't about that, because that's uh, waiting trial, but it was about, as your uh, report said, the course links between Rupert Murdoch's News International Empire and, effectively, the people who run Britain. And to have a Prime Minister sending a text saying, keep your head up, after this woman has been forced to resign, is fairly incredible. And some, it's said that over a dozen texts were exchanged in this period between them. Uh, Every, uh, every government minister or government department seems to have sent her a text commiserating with her. You might have thought they would have thought twice about this. And it really does lift a, world, a lid on a world where there is such a caused involvement that you have senior British politicians going to a pyjama party. Now, I don't know if you have ever been to a pyjama party. I haven't. I doubt many of your uh, viewers have been to a pyjama party. But a pyjama party hosted by Rebecca Brook, uh, where politicians and others mingle with the people who run the news international empire in Britain, it's a very incestuous, a very small world. And I think it does um, mean that the Camerons look increasingly entrapped in Swedes. And they themselves come from a very upper-class background. He went to Britain's top public school, Eton. Uh, her, his wife is very rich. And it looks like they are an elite government formed by people who... And an elite government which mixes with the elite rather with ordinary people and don't really know things like how much a pint of milk would cost, so don't know the concerns of ordinary people. So at a time when austerity is biting and they are committed to these austerity measures, these allegations, I think, reinforce the idea that this is a government of the elite, for the elite, which is out of touch with ordinary people. Right, so how is this going to play out for the uh, coalition government in Britain? We saw there not a lot of accusations against the Labour Party. Yeah, well, I, th I think that the, it does encompass the Labour Party as well, although the new Labour leader, Ed Miliband, has been desperate to put a line underneath this. But there were extremely close contacts between, even more close contacts, actually, between former Prime Minister Tony Blair than David Cameron. I mean, Rupert Murdoch describes Tony Blair as a friend. And they socialised, holiday together, and extremely close connections between, uh, between the two. And... The Blair's successor, the Labour Prime Minister Gordon Brown, continued that, although subsequently they fell out when uh, News International's main newspaper, The Sun, refused to back him at the last general election. 
So there are course, uh, you know, course ties involving all the politicians. And what it shows is how much they were enslaved to the Rupert Murdoch news empire. They really believed that these people uh, were uh, decisive in swinging public, uh, public opinion and therefore would do almost anything to curry favour with the uh, Murdochs and the News International were desperate to have dinner or go to a party with them, etc. So I think it does say something about democracy in Britain, which people will be asking about, you know. We don't have access, ordinary people don't have access to David Cameron or to previous prime ministers, but Rupert Murdoch can go to a pyjama party. Rupert Murdoch can snap his fingers and they'll come running to have cocktails or whatever with him. So, uh, you know, we don't have that access, but money, of course, buys you access. It just confirms for what a lot of people is, is that this is a very tiny group of people running the country, 1%, and the 99% are denied really any say in how the country is run and are having to pay at the same time the cost of a financial crisis, which we did not, did not cause, and the same elite, the same 1% did cause. Chris Bambury, political analyst, joining me there on the line from London with his comments. Thank you very much.